Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show along with the coach, I'm Jim Lauk. Believe it or not, we are already 10 games into the 2015 season. Bulls are 6-4 and four overall. They have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with a series of nationally ranked teams. Been a lot of great softball out on campus and a lot more coming up this weekend. Coach, let's take a look at these first 10 games kind of in total here. The hitting has been very, very solid. You're hitting for a high average as a team. Stealing the bases, you told us this team would steal. Offensively, a lot of things going right. Yeah, no question about it. We're uh, we're very aggressive. Um, we're we're punching back when we get behind. You know, how many times have we come back and either tied the game up or took the lead after being down two, three, four runs? And so that bodes well for the future. You know, this team's got a lot of fight in them, and uh, you know they're relentless that way. And now, you know, to try to keep the uh, the other team at zero as long as possible, I think we're still working on that. And and that will come. I think the, the big thing to remember with this team right now is that, uh, albeit you might have you know some juniors and seniors on this team that have been on the team for about two three years. However, you know as far as the game time stuff, as far as the numbers of innings played over the last two three years have been basically taken up by those those people like Medina and Salvarul and the Goff sisters and Nevins in, in, in the circle and even before that Lindsey Richardson in the circle they were eating up a lot of innings so you know for for Nunn and Griner in the circle right now they're really getting you know, thrust into the situation early which is great and then uh, you know some players themselves like Litchfield's getting some at bats right now where she wasn't getting a lot of early in the season and Monica Santos and so forth so I think you know, as I've always said, you know, you got to play, then you can get comfortable, then you have a chance to get good, and then we have a chance to be really good. So I think we're in that uh, identifying our own identity at this point of the year. You told us you were going to factor in a lot of freshmen early in this season. We have seen that, and a lot of them doing well. I guess the two that, that really come to mind are Aston Donovan and Lauren Evans, who are now pretty much fixtures in the everyday lineup, and they've really contributed. They really have. Uh, you know, I think they're very comfortable with themselves, first of all. You know, um, their house is clean, so to speak. You know, they're, they're good academic kids and they come from great families, and as, as all our freshmen do. But they've really uh, have gotten comfortable quickly. You know, I, I like what Cassidy Boyle's doing at shortstop. I, I, you know, I like Mia Fung behind the plate. She's done a great job. And, and then Kenya Yancey coming in and providing some huge hits for us in, in two big ball games. So, you know, I don't think uh, by any stretch of imagination can any of our freshmen not play uh, against the schedule we're playing and they've proven it so you know that lends itself to competition that lends itself to the future which looks really good but uh, I think we have to start meshing right now with feeling comfortable with our pitching and our catching I think that's really the biggest thing right now is is just getting them on the same page of, of how to attack the hitters I'm I'm not looking for anybody to be the the 12 to 14 strikeout pitcher a game or throwing no hitters you know eight times in a three-year span with, we just want to pitch the contact, we want to get outs and uh, give our teams the best chance to make a play because we can't catch the walks. And as you know, the, I mean, we've already alluded to the fact that 38 walks in 10 games, that's probably uh, 38 more than I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with, in all honesty. Is it a matter of command at this point? Because going beyond the number of walks, too, there's also those 2031 counts where you, you have to come in with something, and that can get you into danger as well. You know, you, you bring up a tremendous philosophy that if you don't challenge early, you have to give in late. And so not only do the walk ratios go up, but the batting average against you goes up because I don't care who you are. If the count's 0 and 1, I can tell I don't know what's coming. But if it's 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 2 and 1 consistently, I can tell you it's coming. And so. Uh, we can't make the other team comfortable to play, and that's what's happening right now. We've got to make the other hitters uncomfortable. And if we can change speeds and work ahead in the count, that's even bonus time. So we're not really pitching behind uh, in respect of reverse. We, we're not even throwing in reverse very well right now, which means throwing off speeds in hitting count situations. So. We're getting it together, and hopefully we can see some things happen this weekend. Well, you see some positives, though. The none no hitter, uh, Claudio, coming out of the bullpen against Florida and pitching out of trouble time and time again, just leaving everything out there. So you know that the mindset is there, the work ethic is there. No doubt. I, I think also early in the season, uh, we're not going to try to go seven innings with a pitcher, you know, and Claudio, you know, she emptied the gas tank against Florida, uh, albeit none through a great game against Illinois State in respect of the number of pitches. I don't think she threw 108 pitches in seven innings, and we're never going to go more above that 
at all. But she didn't really struggle in any innings at that point. And Sammy Griner's gone through some innings where it's a four or five pitch inning, but then again, it's a 22 pitch inning because we're not fielding a ground ball. Um, so we've, we've got to make sure that uh, we're limiting the opportunities for the other teams via the walk, the hits, and the, uh, and the errors. And uh, right now, I think we're anywhere between one and a half or two uh, base runners at inning right now. And that's going to be really, really tough to maintain a great defensive position over the year. You have had the leadership, though, that I suspect you had anticipated. You look at the batting stats and the players right at the top are the veterans, Devine and Weber and some of the players that have been through the mill here before, Leanne Spivey, over 400. You know, I, I can't say enough about Deanna right now. You know, she worked so hard in the fall uh, to go out there and, and be comfortable to play. She's very confident in what she's doing right now. Uh, Julie, early in the year, if you, if you recognize the batting average after the first weekend, was, was struggling a little bit, and she basically came to me and, and said, Coach, I'm not thinking anymore. I said, well, that's great, Julie. I never asked you to think. I just asked you to go play. And, and so her batting average has gone up tremendously, and uh, Leanne Spivey's Leanne Spivey. You know, she's just a consistent kid, and, and if you watch Julie and you watch Leanne play, they're having fun. You know, they love to play. They love to play practice. And so when you're playing practice like that, it just translates into the game. And the game is not that difficult. And that's what you're trying to get 18 to 19 to 20 year old kids to, to remember. It's still a game. So play the game. Don't play against your opponent. Play the game. It's kind of like playing golf. You go against the course. You don't go against your partner that you're playing with. And so if we can maintain that, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to approach it. And I think Ronnie Gajanik does the same thing for us. So, you know, we've got some decent leadership up there, there's no question. And congratulations to Julie Weber on the conference honor roll for the first time this year. Stay with us, much more to come when we return. We're going to follow Ronnie Gajownik around at practice with a very unique point of view. That's coming up later in the show. Coach will be back. We'll preview this week's action, so stay with us. Once again, Tampa General Hospital is proud to be named the number one hospital in Tampa Bay by U.S. News & World Report and recognized as one of America's best hospitals in four specialties, cardiology and heart surgery, nephrology, orthopedics, and neurology. Number one in Tampa Bay, again, and one of America's best, Tampa General Hospital. Trusted for our expertise, chosen for our care. Welcome back to the Coach Ken Erickson Show. There have been a lot of changes in covering sports, especially in the last few years because of new technology, especially on the video side. One of the breakthroughs recently was the GoPro camera. It can do just what it says. It can go anywhere because of its size. We put it on Ronnie Gajownik, and it gave us a unique view as she went through a USF softball practice. Wanna say hi? Say hi. <laughs> hey Morgan, close up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who wants a close up? <laughs>
you dum dum. Oh yeah, look at that power. Oh yeah, look at that power. Five points. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Looking for an individual or family health care plan, or maybe a dental policy? Look no further than the Tampa Florida Blue Centers in West Shore, Carrollwood, and Pinellas Park. For more information, go to floridablue.com or call the number on the screen. Welcome back. We've got a lot of softball again this weekend on the USF campus starting on Friday. Coach, before we talk about opponents, we'll talk about the style of tournament because this one's a little bit different from the first two. You've got seedings involved, so you don't quite know who you're playing in some of the games. You don't quite know the start times on some of the games on Saturday. It throws a little wrinkle into it, but it's kind of fun. It, it's fun because it prepares you for the postseason because you don't know what's going to happen in the postseason with uh, the NCAA tournament or even the conference tournament, so it does. I, I know administration loves it. I know our ground school loves it because now you only got you know four teams in there. You only got ten games total: four on Friday, four on Saturday, and two on Sunday. There's no you know midnight ball games to watch South Florida play in 38 degree weather during a cold front. So we're going to be in great shape this weekend. And um, but it's a great format to, to challenge us because you get to the NCAA tournament, like I said, and, and you get your first win. You don't know who you're going to play in game two. You know, and then after the first two rounds, the next winners play the winners, and you don't know who's going to play. So this, I think, is great. You know, the one thing we do know is that we're going to go through and play everybody first. So we'll play Auburn, and then we'll get Marshall, and they get Dartmouth, and then it becomes the bracket play where the one and four play and the two and three play, and then the championship and the consolation uh, game is on Sunday. So uh, it presents a great challenge for us, and it pre prepares us for uh, the unknown. And I think you hit the, the nail on the head with that, So, but we're looking forward to it. Auburn at 2.45 on Friday, Marshall at 5. The Dartmouth game will be at 12.15 on Saturday, and then more softball later in the day Saturday and Sunday with the times and opponents to be determined. As you head into this third weekend of play, Every team, sooner or later, goes through some sort of adversity, and one of the things that really defines a successful team is how well you deal with it. How has this team handled the ups and downs of the first two weeks? Well, we haven't hit the adversity yet, so, um, but thanks. I mean, I'm, I'm going to look forward to that. You know, it's, it's, about, it's, it's about forming and, and uh, storming and reforming, and uh, right now we're still in, in, the, in the forming stage, the initial forming stage of finding out who we are, but... Um, they've approached every game uh, the same, you know, and um, like I said, they continue to fight and this and that. And I think this is a very, very tight-knit group uh, where you have a lot of people pulling for each other. That's a big deal. But, you know, I mean, this weekend, I think we're going up against teams that are combined records 20-1, and one, you know, right now. So, you know, the challenge this weekend, maybe even more than the first two weekends, Auburn's a heck of a team, obviously, another powerhouse out of the, out of the SEC, and Marshall is – a nationally powerful team over the last two, three years, but right now they're playing very, very well. They had some young kids the past couple of years, and now they're juniors and seniors, and they got a great pitcher on their team, and, and they're all well coached. Dartmouth, a great coaching staff that came from the University of Tennessee, and they were uh, leaders in the Ivy last year. So 
you know, every game is a battle right now, and uh, there's a reason they're on our schedule, you know, it's to prepare us for the later on parts and this and that, but you got to put some W's on the board to help yourself out the RPI-wise, And but if we just continue to play the game, I think the scoreboard's going to take care of itself, and that's the way we've approached it, but uh, I'm looking forward to a little bit more maturation this week than we had the last two weekends. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot. You could certainly craft a schedule mm -hmm. that allowed you to come up with a very impressive one loss total early in the season. Yeah. You choose not to do that and the players buy into that too. When you talk to them, they know why they're playing the teams they're playing and they accept that challenge yeah. and that's critical well, as well. You got to see the best pitching. You know, if you don't see the best pitching and you have a record of you know, let's say 50 and 6 going into the postseason and you haven't seen great see, uh, pitching at all, you're not prepared for the, the national championship. And so for us to, to go out there, and, and I'm never afraid. Look, I, I don't like the L's at all, but I'm not afraid to go out and, and play the best teams. And, and the girls on our team aren't either. There's, there's no fear in that factor. Um, but they're going to see the best pitching, um, and that's where we make our schedule. So nothing uh, faces them whatsoever. And you've seen that in our postseason runs the past few years. We've gone up against... Some of the best pitchers in the country we went against a pitcher in 2012 that had a 32 game winning streak, you know, and one of the best pitchers in the, in the country that was uh, that won the national championship last year and, and we beat her the year before. So uh, these are the things that we try to do. Uh, we try to get to the point where we become very callous to the fact that the other pitchers on the other team are very, very good. So uh, I think it's working right now. We haven't been phased out yet and uh, I don't think this team will be. We're looking forward to some great games this weekend. Hope you'll come out and join us. USF versus Auburn and then Marshall on Friday against Dartmouth and a second game on Saturday and then also a single game on Sunday. Coach, have a great weekend. We'll take a look at all the games that take place in the upcoming days on next week's show. You know, I think we might be the only team in the country that's going to get to play all five of their games this weekend. I don't know if you're watching the Weather Channel, but that's on my deals, the Weather Channel and Sports Center. So. Right now I'm feeling really good about well, playing ball games this weekend. Weather has been beautiful, and as we've said many, many times, boy, if you haven't been to that stadium, what a great atmosphere. You've already had some really big crowds, and it's a great place to watch a game. So make sure you come out, watch one or two or three days this weekend, and join us next week right here on the Coach Ken Erickson Show.